there we go. So we're going to mix up some colour for um, our bird. And the first colour we need is the blue. We don't need to have a huge puddle of this because we're going to use it really strong. So there's our blue ready to go. So it's quite a red blue, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a warm blue. It's closer to red than the other blues, than yeah. the phthalo blue. So there's our, there's our blue puddle, okay? So that's the French ultramarine. French ultramarine. But we're not going to use so much of that on this. So that's what I'd mix up for the top. So I'm going to use that blue to mix the other colours. And then we need to have a little um, puddle of yellow over here. So, so we don't need a lot of yellow. We need to tone that yellow down a little bit mm. with burnt sienna. Um, would somebody mind squeezing a little bit of fresh burnt sienna on here for me? Please, just out of there. Oh, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna, thank you. This is um, PR101 and it's a fent. There's lots of burnt siennas in different brands. I only yeah. use it, yeah, just on top of that one, thank you. I, yeah, a good squish, thank you. I only use Windsor & Newton burnt sienna. I've tried probably three or four different other ones. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, some of the others are multi-pigment. This is just one pigment, PR101, and it's very transparent for this sort of earth colour. Mm -hmm. A lot of the earth colours are more opaque. Mm -hmm. So it mixes beautifully with um, it mixes beautifully with blue, blues or anything. So these are burnt sienna. We'll just put a little bit in there and we'll just mix them up. Thank you. So there we get our lovely gold for underneath its little chuff. Maybe a wee bit more burnt sienna in there. It needs to be a wee bit stronger. Okay, so there's a little. We don't need much of that. Um, it's a highlight colour, so see underneath the wings and you can just have a bit of fun with that. So we'll leave that burnt sienna there like that and then we're going to mix a neutral, which is going to have, and so rule of thumb with mixing is add the lightest colour first and then add the darker colour to it in very small amounts. And we might even have a couple of puddles of that. So I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that and it's quite a strong burnt sienna mix, so it's going to be quite a strong colour, more blue, more blue, more blue, see it's still quite brown, mm -hmm. so there we've got more of a neutral, mm -hmm. okay, and then here we're going to make this a lighter colour, mm -hmm. so not so, not so, um, not yes. so intense, less saturated, so the correct terminology isn't it, so then you've got a nice little collection, and have you got any blue down here? We've got some burnt sienna. Across the bottom is a tiny bit. I might make this a little bit more, a bit more grey. But see the gorgeous neutrals you get from mm. French ultramarine and mm. this little bit red over here, isn't there? So that's a more neutral grey again. So you just want to mix yourself up some puddles like that. But you do need some reasonably strong, so I've got on there, that's my blue, isn't it? Reasonably strong colour. So then we're going to wet. So here is our um, a 20 or a large brush and we're going to wet this little guy um, first we're going to look for the highlights as we always do because we want to leave some highlights and then maybe I'll just turn this over so I've got a bit of this image so this is the brightest part here isn't it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the, the light must be coming from here as heads light there lights coming from top left so keep that in mind so everything that's on the downside is going to have a shadow effect, everything on the top side is going to be lighter and cooler. Okay, and he's got a little wing out here, so this is quite light down here. That's light there. And we're just going to paint up to the underside of his little chuff there. So we'll start at the bottom. We're going to start painting at the bottom. Oh, that's not a great thing to grab. And so just colour him in. So nice clean line down the edge there. Because you can, the little roughly bits you can do as a last mm -hmm. effect. You don't have to have them looking super ruffled right from the get go. And doing it with a big brush like this is hazardous at the best of times. So I'm just doing the main shapes here. And I'm gonna cut it under his little wing here. I'll just leave that little bit there, not with my big brush, just gonna cut it under his wing there. And I'm going to leave that 
little apron bit collar hanging down there. I'm going to leave that white for now. And then I'm going to go up here like this. And I'm going to do this. And I'm just going to leave some little bits. I'm just going to paint up to about here. And then we'll do this as a separate part. So if you tilt your paper, and I've wet my white, but I said I was going to leave white, so I'll just have to manage that with. Can you just hold it up, Deb, so that we can see in the light where yeah. you're wet? Yeah. 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 Mm. Yep, I'll just finish. I'll wet. Yeah. Right. So the most most important bits to get accurate are the underside of the wing, because the feathers are pretty straight. So have a look. Can you yeah. can, mm -hmm. I, can you see enough mm. where I've left a few little white bits? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Okay. So I'll put that brush down because it's way too big for this job. And I'll use a number eight, probably. It's a 10, but that'll do. <laughs> number 10. And we'll start at the bottom. So looking at the bottom, this is the darkest bit here. Mm -hmm. But see these lovely goldy colors in here and, and around. So we'll start at the bottom. And this is really just a dropping in. I might add a little bit more blue to that side of that one. Because they're warm colors. He's got reflection coming up from the grass and the post. So they're warm colours, so I'll turn it around this way so that you can see, and so I can get my tip to the edge. Yep. If I go in like this, I'm just as likely to mm. muck it up. Mm. If you muck it up, don't worry, let it dry. <laughs> or press it with a... With a um, and ring derby. And ring derby. Look at the video. So here I am. So I'm just, I'm just creating a slightly uneven edge here with my brush. So it suggests. Mm -hmm. so I'm just dropping that colour in there. And I can see my paper's not wet enough, but I want it quite wet. So I'll just put a bit more water in here. That's air conditioning unit, so dry now. And I've got plenty of time. We're going to keep on adding colour and keep on adding water until we're happy with this. So it's not... Um, you see already? Look at what that colour's doing. Yeah. So just a little tip makes it move. So that's, that's my dark bit at the bottom, so drop a little bit more in there. So, so it dries lighter? It yeah. will dry lighter. Everything dries lighter and okay. different pigments dry more or less lighter. Then I'm going to define this top edge here with this dark colour. Just to get that in there. Because there's a little shadow underneath here. Rounded wing there. And then where else do I want some dark? I want some dark at the top. But I think I'll just bring a little bit up here. Because we want to keep this piece lighter so it's rounded so that's you can see there's a, a little patch around there that's lighter you see what the pigment's doing mm -hmm. so i want you just to really enjoy this little process and just look at what what's happening on your paper that comes up to a little point there it's decided to spread a bit further than that so i'll just give it a little tilt and see those colors separating so nicely mm -hmm. so that gives me the, the beginnings of the form of it then i'm going to put that brush down and i'll pick up this smaller brush mm -hmm. or it doesn't really matter what size brush but just something a little bit smaller and I'm going to add a little bit of this lovely goldy colour to warm them up because he's got all these little blushes of gold everywhere so I'm going to drop this in here up under his little wing because this is too cold and dark for that but it just gives it a bit of foundation around there and around this side here now I am wetting I, it, I intended to wet right out to that um, edge of that wing there, the underside of that wing. Just put a bit of water in there, not very clean. So we'll just drop in a little bit of yellow down here, there, and then there's a little bit that comes down here. It's a little bit bright, I think, that yellow. But it will fade, of course, we know that, don't we? Over the top of that. So you can see I've been quite generous with the colour. And the water. And the water. <laughs> well, the water's what's going to mix it and make it move. See, see what's happening? It's, yeah. it's fun, eh? Yeah. That part of it. <laughs> so then I'm just going in the too. And then I'm going, with a, I'm going with a wet brush. And just tidying up that little edge. It's not not perfectly smooth, but I'm just just you know doing a little bumpity bump on the edge. Now I can see this part here. 
is dry. I don't really want it to be dry, but I don't want it to spread too far. So I'm just going to go and remember we did this last week, just go in with the edge of your brush and soften that edge. Now we're going to add some burnt sienna. So you see what's happening with those colours? Mm. So that's why you need these puddles all mixed up before you start. And I think this is too dull down here, so I'll just drop a bit of burnt sienna in there. Oh, a bit stronger, mate. <laughs> no, it's, it's, like an old, old, it's like an old lady's harum. <laughs> and I sit down. Make it a little bit, bit, little bit more stronger. And I've got plenty of water on my paper still. You can yeah. see all the water? Mm -hmm. yeah. Still tipping. And you can see what it's doing. See how bossy the yellow is? It's pushing itself out there. <laughs> so now I'm going to drop, I'm going to warm up that bottom area there. And I'm going to put some in here because I think that yellow is too yellow for me. So I'm maintaining that nice smooth line to its little wing. But dropping some burnt sienna in there, which makes it more of a, just a little bit here. Keep tipping. Don't be freaking out now, thinking, oh, it's all too bright. <laughs> but it will fade, of course. <laughs> so then I'll, I'll drop a bit in here. And a little bit more coming up in here. It's truly mixing it on the paper, mm. yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And, and these colours are just lovely for that. I'll just pick up a bit of that more neutral. Just nicely mix it up in there. There we go. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a... Underneath there, see this little mm. blush there? And then you can look at it and think, okay, where am I at <laughs> with this? And I'm thinking that, that yellow at the top is too bright. So what am I going to do there? I'm going to add some water. Mm, I don't like that yellow. So bright, isn't it? So you're adding with just water? It's just water. And I'll you're just not removing anything? No, I'm just adding some water. Because mm. it's starting to dry out a little bit around there. It's water. So I've still got my nice little bit here. And I could just tidy that up a little bit and lift a little bit out of there. So I want to keep those little shapes there. And then, what else do I need? Blue. <laughs> we need some more, we need some more grey, some more neutral, don't we? Because you've got yeah. a little bit Because I've got a chaffinch here, not a yeah. swallow. Okay, so we just add in some more darks. And this is what's so lovely about um, this medium. So we've got, we've got that now, so we just have a little tip around. See, we've got a nice little light bit there. And when I'm done, I'm going to lift a little bit more off down this side here. But we'll just add a bit more. Yeah. And when you've got paper wet like this, you can just keep adding and adding and adding. I don't know whether any of you know Carol Carter. She's a beautiful watercolorist, really distinct style in um, America. And she, she does a lot of her paintings and she starts off with a real border of burnt sienna around everything. And she keeps on adding and adding and adding on top. And it ends up completely differently to something with a, with a border. Now I think I need a bit more shadow under here. But no one's gonna look at your reference painting. They're not gonna see that. I'm just keeping <laughs> uh, your reference image, I mean. They're not gonna mm. see that. So we want a, an interesting bird, not a boring grey bird. So I think I've put too much yellow here, so I'm just going to go around there and lighten that, because and we'll do that as a, as a next bit with a small brush. And I'm going to just let that all have a bit of. I'll just do a little lift here, and it'll fill up again, but it'll keep keep a bit of that there. I'm going to take a little bit of lift out of here and then drop in some more of that dark around here. Whilst that's still wet. Now we're still wet here. Now this is the bit that gets a bit tricky. So this bit here, so you decide on your colour. Don't use too big a brush. So this is what is this? This is an eight. Maybe I'll use a smaller brush. We'll use a six. And this bit you want to do when it's not, see how much that has spread? Mm -hmm. We don't want it to spread quite as much as that. We want it to bleed. 
but not quite so much. So we started at the bottom and we've got all those colours happening. And if it, I think I'll just add a little bit more dark down there. Just in the underbelly part. So you can really have some fun doing that. Then back to this colour. And this is what I'm going to do. So here's, so I'm being a feather. I'm, I'm being like a feather. So I'm leaving some gaps and I'm following the line. See that? Little brush. And so they'll, and then again. So that's wet there. It's damp. It's wet. It's drying. It's not as wet as down here. It's lost its sheen. So it's, we call it damp. That's my god, that's my golden colour. So I'll just lift that off and let that dry. And I'll do that, we'll do that next. So if it's too dry, it's too painty, it's too um, uh, it's it's too distinctly feathered. So I'll just go over it with a wet brush like this and just loosen it up a little bit because we just want a little bit of that light showing through. And I'll come and I'll lift this here now that that's a bit more reasonable and it's drying out in us. You can see what's happening here? Mm. So that's all we're going to do. Yeah, that's the blue to create, to create the neutrals. So we mix blue, uh, French ultramarine blue and Bensi in it to create these beautiful colours, all these colours. And you can see now it's all starting to granulate. So we put the blue in afterwards. The blue by itself, we can use on the next part. No, under here, this is blue. It looks blue to, to me. me. I'll put some blue in there if you'd like some more blue. I can see it as more of a neutral. But look, we'll do this for you, Barb, because you can see blue. Well, you can do what you like, you know, and we all see things differently. I don't know about what you can see when you're here. I know what I can see. But then that's the beautiful thing about it is, is that you can, so just, let's see, I'm just grabbing a little. That was just me, probably. Yeah, but that's fine. It's just you. We'll just do that in honour of you, Barb. <laughs> we'll just take, a, take a little bit down there too. Okay? Yeah. And if we wanted to, we're really wet down here. We can add some more blue down here too, just to follow it through in a little bit. So there. Any questions? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do we do the clear?